Hey y'all, happy Sunday. How you all doing? Welcome to live Q&A number 20 this fine Sunday morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Uh, hope everybody's having a good day. Hope uh, folks have been out in the shop getting their uh, CNC fix for the weekend. Uh, before we get going, let's... Um, Let's do a little bit of a CNC roll call here. We got Patrick's Workshop. You thought you were first, you were second, my friend, because Joe Byrne beat you. And thank you for the uh, kind words there, Joe. Our Mervyn Schumacher in the house, the Dirty Knobs. Uh, interesting name. That can be taken one of about 52 different ways. Welcome aboard. <laughs> uh, Leo Steger, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Thomas Grin in Austin for the next five months. You know, I hear they have some good blues clubs there. I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, right. Um, let's see. Dave Kraus, Don Lee, Ayal Peleg, Don Ellings, John DeRoos, Leroy. I believe that's Leroy Mater out there hanging out. Uh, Steve Nealon, the man himself, the man behind Harneal Media, webmaster to the stars. Uh, Kevin Ells, Bob Hiltabridal, poster of all things humorous. Doug W., Jim Hester, Frankie C. and C. and Woodworking Channel, says he's not here. That's cool. Plausible deniability, say nothing at casual. Drone Guy, 26, 026, excuse me. Uh, CNC Swede, Evening in Sweden, yep. Uh, Michael Bell and Alvin Allison, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, Chad M., Russell Grisham, looks like we got a pretty good crowd going. Um, I've seen a few questions over there already, and I will get to them in just a couple of minutes. Um, I do have something I would like to talk about. Uh, I've seen in several of the CNC router groups and um, on Facebook, I'm talking about, excuse me, and I've had a few questions emailed to me. And it's basically in reference to V-bits. And is there a way to calculate how deep a V-bit is going to cut based on the width of the area that it's going to cut out? And there is a way to calculate that. Now, somebody asked that question uh, in a comment on one of my older videos, and this has been, oh, months back now. And somebody answered that comment last night and I cannot find that person's comment. I mean, I've scoured through, I don't know what happened to it, so I can't give you credit. If you're watching, I do apologize, but this person turned us all on to a website out there called CNC and this is S E E hyphen N hyphen C dot com. And I put a link to it in the description box. And let me see uh, if, I'm, uh, if I can screen share here. Um, and yes, I am. Here is the web page. And what they have come up with is a V-bit depth calculator here. And basically what you're going to do to use this to determine how deep a V-bit's going to cut is you enter the bits angle right here uh, and they need a number from 1 to 160 so for this example it's a 60 degree V bit and then here is the width right here of what you're going to be cutting and I'll just go ahead and use the numbers that are already plugged in here so with a 60 degree V bit cutting half inch wide you just click submit and it tells you the cutting depth is going to be 0 0.4330 inches. Now, this is in inches. I don't know if there is a similar calculator out there uh, for you folks who use the metric system. But just a little cheat, what you can do is just kind of copy this. 
and come over to a new Google Google search and type in in millimeters and there's a built-in calculator it'll tell you that's 10.9982 millimeters so just a, a little trick of the trade somebody passed along to me and I thought I'd share that with you um, they this is basically these folks are hot and heavy into carbide create and some of the online software but I thought it was a neat little um calculator to kind of share with y'all now over here they have an offset calculator that'll help you work out how far to cut away from a profile line so that the bit itself will cut on the profile line for like a flat bottom v carving um, i don't tend to use anything like this but it's uh it's available there as well but i thought that that little depth calculator would be a handy little son of a gun to have and, uh, you know, to bookmark and uh, see how see how deep it's going to cut for you if you need to do something like that. So, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see here. Leroy says uh, Vectric VCarve Pro version 8.5 had an icon to center your work in the window. I haven't found anything in version 10 to do that. Um, yes, it, it. you want to center your work in the window. Um, let me pull it up and I'll go back to screen share. Whoops. Let me go back to screen share here, uh, make sure I am. It, we'll go ahead and we'll expand the 2D view here and zoom out. Let's say you have something over here um, and you need to center that. The icon is right over here. It's all, it got moved under align selected objects. This is in cut 2D, V-carve, and Aspire. Uh, it got put under this icon here to free up some space down here where they added more tools. And you go up here to align selected objects, and it's that icon right there. Boom. And it'll center it. Uh, I will be doing a video fairly soon on some of these icons down here and how to align one to another, this, that, and the other, one vector to another. It's There's some pretty cool tools in here. But uh, I hope that answers your question there, um, there, Leroy. Let me uh, scroll back up here to the top because we have a couple of uh, questions over here. Don Lee says, hey, Mark, Happy New Year to you and yours. Happy New Year to you and yours, Mr. Don. Uh, I'm fairly new to the CNC hobby and was wondering if you could tell me what standard ball nose bits are traditionally used for. Well, they're used for a couple of things. Um, generally speaking, they're used for 3D carving an outside profile where you don't have a lot of depth involved. You're not doing a lot of plunge cuts. If you're just rounding over something, for instance, cutting a dome or cutting a dish or something like that that doesn't have a real steep angle in it. Um, and personally, I also use them for cutting a radius in the bottom of a pocket. If, like, I'm cutting out a... Um, a jewelry box tray or something like that. I'm making a little compartment and I want a rounded radius bottom. I'll do a profile cut with a ball nose bit and then use a standard end mill to clear out the rest of that pocket. And it works out fairly well. So it's a, you know, it, it, it's just kind of, uh, in those areas where you need a rounded radius or you need a very, very small step over and you can't have a sharp edge on the corner of the bit that might dig into the material as it's stepping down the side. So they're, they're good to have around. They're, you'll occasionally... Now, having said that, I don't use my ball nose bits probably, oh, maybe 10% of the cuts that I make will use a ball nose bits. Most of my cuts are done with standard end mills 
and VBIT. So I hope that answers your question. And let's see here. Mr. Al Peleg says, uh, Hi, Mark. I remember that on your two-year review of the Gatton C&C, you said that if you would have done it again from the start, you would do the fourth axis differently. Could you talk a bit about this? Certainly. Um, basically, what I was referring to, and I'm going to go back to screen sharing here. Um, let's go back to that. Well, this picture is just as good as any, I guess. Um, what I was referring to is this cutout here up front. And what I would have done differently is this cutout is just too narrow. And so as it sits right now with the chuck opened up and my tailstock all the way back, the longest piece I can get in here is uh, about 15 and three quarters inches of cutting capacity. Uh, I can, I can uh, chuck a 16 inch long piece of material in here, but I got to stay away from the jaws on my chuck. So I just would have made this wider or maybe actually spaced out the mounts for my lead nut um, brackets. Well, you can't really see them. These are the lead nut support bearings over here. Or excuse me, the lead screw support bearings. I would have spaced them out a little bit so that the gantry could come a little bit further forward in Y. And um, not even bothered with this drop down area here to mount it. I would have come up with a different mount. And that's mainly because I have very limited uh, capacity here between centers. The cutout itself is 32 inches wide. And when I was building the table, I had no idea what rotary axis setup I was going to buy. So by the time I got this one and got everything mounted down, I didn't realize it would take up as much room as it did. So that's what I would have done differently. I would have either pushed it forward a little bit and dropped it down some more, or I would have come up with a different mount entirely. Um, now, uh, I've been asked why I don't just put it up on the table, and the reason for that, is I, I can put it up on the table and mount it that way, but I, I'm then I'm limited as far as Z height is concerned. So uh, I have to do small diameters when I'm running, and, and it just it just didn't quite work out. It's just something that I really didn't think through. But that's all part of this CNC adventure that we're that we're doing that we're on. So it wasn't a whole heck of a lot I could I could do uh, sight unseen, you know. Uh, I, I just probably would have, I just probably would have thought it through a little bit more. So, I hope that answers your question. Uh, Leo Steger says, the other side of that calculator is useful for a chamfer around a profile. Yes, sir, it is. Uh, something that I like to do if I'm using a V-bit to chamfer an outside profile is I'll just set my own depth of cut say I want the V-bit to come down uh, a quarter of an inch, and then I do a profile tool path with a cutting depth of a quarter of an inch on the vector. And it chamfers that outside edge. Looks nice and pretty. So, uh, maybe later says, Mark, would you say that one could mount a fourth axis on the table when you need to use it? Yes, you certainly can, but again, you got to take your Z height, your Z capacity into account because if you are that close to the top of your Z's travel, you may be real limited on a diameter you can use. And that was my problem. So, uh, let's see here. What do we got going? Uh, Charlotte Harbor Sales says, I see the Gatton machine has a Y axis going in line with the grooves on the table. My bob is X in that direction. Is there some standard in the world that sets this direction? Yes, there is. The standard is when you're standing in front of the machine, 
no matter which way your gantry is facing, when you're standing in front of the machine in the position you operate that machine in, X always goes from side to side, Y always goes from front to rear, and Z always goes up and down in elevation. That is standard everywhere. So if you mount your machine, what some folks would say sideways, to where your gantry is moving along on the X, then that's your X. But X, when you're in your normal operating position, is always side to side. Y is always front to rear. So, and that's just, that's more for doing the artwork than it is for anything else. But I have seen some people, um, I have seen some people refer to their gantry as their X-axis, and that may not be the case for everybody. So the first CNC I built was uh, oriented that way. My gantry moved along the X, and it ran the whole width of the back of my shop. <laughs> but uh, X is always side to side, Y is always front to rear, and Z is always up and down in elevation. So, let's see. Um, I all Peleg says, thanks. I thought you mentioned the option of using the fourth axis along the Y axis instead of the X. I thought about that as well. I thought about cutting out an area in the center of the table and mounting the, uh, putting the mount there down in the center of the table. But the way my shop sets, um, I've got a very big machine and a very small shop. So uh, my shop is basically an over-glorified 8-foot wide by 12-foot long uh, garden shed. And the only thing it has going for it is a concrete floor and electricity. And where the CNC is sitting, it's, which is the only place I can put it, I have 17 inches on either side and 24 inches in the back. So I would need to be able to get around to the back of my machine to use a rotary axis oriented that way. And the way I'm set up right now, I just can't do it. But it could be an option uh, for folks if you have the room to be able to run your uh, rotary axis in the Y direction. It's just I don't have that option available to me right now. So let's see. The Dirty Knobs, do you use Rhino also? I attempted to learn Rhino and uh, got meh with it. Um, my son-in-law is a uh, graphic artist, and he bought Rhino to use on some of his graphic art, decided he had got the wrong software and just basically gave it to me. I tried to learn it, but once I got into using the Vectric software, VCarve and Aspire, I just haven't needed it. So, yes, I still have it, but do I use it? Not really, no. So, it is an excellent program, but it does have a steep learning curve. It is less expensive than Aspire, but then you have to start buying CAM plugins and things like that, and they're actually pretty comparable. So, let's see. Uh, hey, Eloy, my partner in crime. Rockin' Woodworks in the house. My partner in crime on the Trampled Underfoot podcast. Released every Tuesday morning. And uh, live streamed every Tuesday evening at, uh, what is it, 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific on the Trampled Underfoot podcast YouTube channel. We have a lot of fun. So, welcome aboard, Eloy. Well, let's see. Frankie CNC and Woodworking Channel. I'm collecting parts to build a CNC table leg machine and smaller signs and parts for jigs. Table leg machine. Are you talking about like a CNC lathe or something like that? That'd be an interesting build. Um, let's see. Charlotte Harbor Sales says, so the Bob standard is sideways. Well, it's just based on where you... Uh, how you orient your machine. I mean, but, but that's fine. It's if your gantry moves in the X, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Like I say, my first CNC, that's what it did, but that was just simply how I had to put it in the shop because I didn't have any room to mount it the other direction. So let's see. 
Oh, okay, I see. Maybe later. I asked the question just before you answered it. By the way, this is Dave Clements. Howdy, Dave. How you doing? Uh, this is your trail name for your Appalachian Trail hike in March. Oh, you're going to hike the Appalachian Trail? Good, good, good on you. I mean, if I was 40 years younger, I might actually envy you. But now all I can think is my aching back. Uh, we have, uh, I'm out on the West Coast in Southern Oregon, and the Pacific Crest Trail goes from the Mexican border to the Canadian border, and it might go further in Canada or Mexico. So you're talking about almost 3,000 miles of trail, of walking trail. Um, or no, excuse me, um, 2,000 miles, I'm sorry. And you can go from the Canadian border to the Mexican border or the other direction. And, you know, I, if I get the urge to go hike that trail, I got to tell you, at 58 years old, I lay down till that urge passes. But good on you, man. It, it sounds like an adventure. So let's see. Jerry Varney, howdy. And uh, Frankie CNC says, yes. So evidently, yes, you are going to be building a CNC lathe. I do hope you video that, Frankie. Um, that would be cool to watch. I'd love to see how that build would go. I am very much uh, interested in that. So, Andrew Russell, hi from Ireland. Well, hello from Oregon, USA. So, let's see. Does anybody have any questions about anything at all? Um, I'm hoping to have uh, get back to posting regular videos next week. Don't hold me to it. I've got projects in progress right now. And um, I got to finish up some footage today and hopefully uh, this project will work out and I'll be able to start posting uh, videos on it. So let's see. Um, okay. Uh, Dave says, absolutely. I'm 65 and still kicking. Had a heart attack in April of 2018 and work out at the cardiac rehab 34 times a week, or was that supposed to be three or four times a week? Holy cow. Even three or four times a week makes me want to lay down. Oh, man. Let's see. I would like to see videos for a CNC wood lathe, says Ronald Ledger. Yeah, me too. I'd, I'd, I'd love to check that out. I.L. Peleg says, can you talk about tool changing? I saw some need to use a wrench. Some do it by hand with a collet. There's also what's called an ATC. What will it require and what will it do? Well, ATC stands for automatic tool changer. And you're talking big money there. Automatic tool changers are not cheap. Each tool has to go, and by tool I mean bit, each router bit has to go into a tool holder. And most automatic tool changers, in fact it might be all automatic tool changers, the spindle is outfitted for the automatic tool changer and it will pneumatically grab that tool holder and hold it in place. Then it'll move to a position put the tool in the rack, let go of it, move over, grab another tool, clamp onto it, lift it up, and then go back and do the work. You're talking big money. Automatic tool changers are expensive. Um, as far as changing tools, as far as I know, all collets need some form of wrench, unless you're talking at an uh, automatic tool changer. And then it's nothing really all that special. It's just like you put the bit in the collet, tighten it up, use it when you're finished, shut everything down, of course. I mean, shut your router down or spindle down, of course. Change out the bit, reset your Z0, and off you go. So I, um, the project that I'm doing, I will kind of go over a little bit more of the tool changing process uh, when I get to cutting, hopefully this afternoon. So, let's see. Um, uh, Mark, have you considered doing a video on the use of the most commonly used bits? Uh, as a matter of fact, I did. 
worked on. Um, it is a video titled um, Bits That uh, CNC Beginners Should Have. I went down a list of... Um, I went down a list of the most commonly used bits that the beginner... It should see you through just about any project you would want to do. Um, I talked about straight end mills. I talked about ball nose bits, V bits, and um, a couple of other bits that I don't recall right off the top of my head. Um, I talked about their use and what you would use them for. Uh, I mean, where that wasn't self-explanatory... I will put a link in the description box to this video as soon as it goes live. And I just wrote that down, a note for myself to put that in the description. And uh, you can check that out. So, uh, yeah, Frankie says it uh, also requires uh, an automatic tool changer, uh, also requires a pretty good air compressor. Yes, it certainly does. Um, let's see, Don Elling says, wouldn't happen to have a source for 8mm hand knobs to fit on dual shaft stepper motors? No, sir, I wouldn't. Um, the only knobs that uh, I've ever bought were from McMaster Car. They were for a quarter inch shaft. I don't know if they have any kind of a, uh, uh, any in 8mm or not, but Don, uh, just me talking here. You have a CNC, make one. <laughs> I know it's easy for me to say. I already have them. So let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah, Leo Steger comes along. He says that uh, tool holders cost $40 to $80 each. Yeah, and I, th this is just me talking here. But unless you're into high production, high volume, I really strictly don't know if they're strictly speaking necessary. I mean, if you've got a bunch of work to get out yesterday, then um, then maybe fine. But uh, I just, I don't know. I have a problem with a $40 holder holding a $15 bit. I don't know. It's just me. So let's see. CNC Swede says, uh, I use your tape glue method almost all the time, but sometimes I screw or clamp my material. And almost every time I crash my bit into a clamp or screws. Do you have any tips on how to avoid that? Yeah, don't do it. Um, no, I, I've done it myself. So you're not the Lone Ranger. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just basically when I design my uh, designs, for lack of a better term, I always account for where how I'm going to mount my material. And like the project I'm working on now, I am screwing it down to a spoil board and I place the parts at least three quarters of an inch in from the edges. So I have that little bit of space there. And, you know, it, you just got to got to plan ahead when it comes to the design process and then stick to it. You know, if if you've given yourself three quarters of an inch for a mounting screw, get it as close to the outside edge as you can and stay within that three quarters of an inch. I mean, if that means drawing a line so you'll stay out of the way. And remember that that bit has a diameter and that it that one edge is going to hug that vector, but the other edge is going to take anything else with it that it can. So just kind of plan ahead. And if you need to move it out to an inch away, so be it. So, let's see, James Chisnell, what are your thoughts on belt drives as opposed to ball and screw drives? Um, I don't have any experience with belt drives, any first-hand experience, but I know people who have used belt drives on Shapeoko and X-Carve machines. Belts do stretch. They can jump time, although that's pretty rare. But uh, they do need tensioning and they do need uh, attention. I mean, it. but it's just normal maintenance. If you take care of it, it'll work just fine for you. A lot of folks have no problem with belt drive at all. I mean, my rotary axis is belt drive, but that's the only belt drive I have. Um, one advantage to lead screw or ball screw is they don't stretch. You get the tension on your couplers. You torque it down to the right value. 
and uh, just check them every once in a while and you'll have no problems at all. It should be as accurate as day one, five years down the road. I mean, the uh, two of the uh, lead screws I'm using on my Gatton CNC now were five years old and other than just occasionally a little bit of white lithium grease and checking the torque on the couplers, you know, it's just fine. They, I've never had a problem with them. So, let's see. Um, and for the record, CNC Suite, that is not my tape and glue method. I mean, I, I unashamedly stole that from Ben Crow over at Crimson Guitars. Um, he did a video on it. On He called it the uh, um, Luthier's Best Kept Secret. And he kind of commented, I wonder if this would work for CNC machines. So I went out and tried it, and by God free, it worked. Let him know, and then let him know I was going to make a video on it. So, yeah, uh, it, but it does work. It's never failed me either. And uh, some folks have commented that uh, 2P10 adhesive is very expensive. Yes, I know it is. Uh, any CA glue, super glue, crazy glue, whatever you want to call it, any CA glue and activator will work. It doesn't necessarily have to be 2P10. So, all right, let's see. Getting close to time to wrap this up. We've been on for 32 minutes. Uh, Charlotte Harbor Sales posted a picture of my soon-to-be gantry on your Facebook post for this broadcast. I was wondering what to put on the right side. Okay, I'll have to check it out when we get done here. Uh, let's see. Any experience with composite or plastic nails? Uh, Alvin Allison wants to know. No, I have no experience with it, but I have a friend down in uh, Florida who does use them, and he says they are a blessing and a curse at the same time because it depends. Um, the uh, If you're using a lot of sheet goods, they're excellent because you can just tack it straight to your spoil board and when you're finished take a, a drift and a hammer and whack it sideways and it will shear those nails off but the bad side to that is if you have uh, threaded inserts or t-nuts or um, t-track or anything if you accidentally hit a piece of aluminum they shatter. If you don't get those nails in perfectly straight, they shatter. So you gotta kind of, there's a learning curve with them. Not only that, they're expensive. So um, let's see. Um, if one would want, could you make the uprights on the Gatton taller and modify the Z box for longer travel so you could fit a fourth axis under it. Yeah, you could do that, um, Dave, but probably the easier way to go would be just simply to drop the table down. Uh, you know, basically putting your uh, linear rails and drive screws a little bit higher up than your table surface rather than trying to cut all new sides and modify a Z-Box. Just raise your, uh, your uh, linear rails and off to the sides. So let's see. Uh, yes, uh, the higher the gantry, the larger the moments and forces on the cutting bit. That is that is true, as well. Uh, let's see. Would it be practical to mount your fourth axis on an auxiliary spo spoil board that could be bolted down to threaded inserts in an exact location each time you use it? Very much so, Jim, and in fact, that was one of the things I had planned on was um, for that mount was uh, homing the, setting it to where when I clicked ref all home, the y-axis would move all the way forward into position and the x-axis would move over right onto the, uh, right above the center of my chuck. But uh, I never got that far with it. <laughs> I just haven't done it yet. There's a little bit of figuring in my brain, and I'm not an electronics person. So, Okay, well, we've been on for about 35 minutes, 
And uh, Frankie says he has cracked the code to deal with belt drive. So there you go, my friends. Uh, address all your belt drive uh, questions to Frankie CNC and Woodworking Channel. And you know, uh, speaking of which, if you put your cursor over these folks out here in the chat, you put your computer cursor over there, you'll see three little dots off to the side. Uh, that you click on those three little dots and the very first option up there is go to channel everybody out there has a uh, YouTube channel uh, you know so put your cursor over there click on those three little dots then put your cursor over go to channel right click open a new tab so you're not shutting me off and go check out their channels uh, like for instance Frankie CNC he's got some pretty cool stuff over there He's not just CNC. He's got his fingers in a bunch of things over there. He does some pretty good work. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up now. Hopefully I will have a regular video for you next Sunday. We'll see how that works out. <laughs> and uh, I will get the uh, bits for CNC beginners I'll get links to that put into the uh, video description on this video as soon as it goes live so uh, give me about five to seven minutes for that and I'll get her done so I uh, just wanted to go ahead and wrap this up by saying thanks very much for spending part of your Sunday with me and uh, if you haven't Get out in the shop and make some chips. But for now, y'all take care. Thanks again for joining me.